My name is Sally Holmes, I'm a Chief Inspector within the Public Protection Department of West Midlands Police and it's our responsibility to deal with any persons who report trafficking to us. And we get people come to us in a, a variety of guises. My colleague who leads on this subject um, is a chap called Tom Chisholm and he dealt with a job that started off in um, Spark Hill area of Birmingham and he ended up um, in the uh, furthest southern part of Tanzania and that was dealing with a job that related to a lady who was brought over here to work as a domestic servant and it, I was finding it quite difficult when I read some papers to understand how it happens that somebody is brought into this country just for that purpose and all the papers are quite legal and they're brought over to work for a particular family in a domestic setting and it almost seems bizarre to me in the 21st century that that does go on, but indeed it does. And then once they're here, they get passed on and passed on and passed on. They're not paid, they're lucky if they're fed, and that is going on in the 21st century in this city. Um, and we try and deal with some of that. In addition to that, Mr Benyon brought up about the uh, cockle pickers. Interesting to note that although this part of England is the furthest from the sea, the gang masters connected to that were traced back to Dudley um, and a lot of money was uh, fortunately seized under the Proceeds of Crime Act as a result of that investigation. But as part of um, what we've called Operation Sentinel, we've led on this and tried to really raise, raise awareness of modern day slavery, which cuts across all of those different sectors. You've touched on agriculture and then obviously in this movie, what we've seen is a local girl who's trafficked. And that's something that we've really, really tried to push awareness of. And you will have seen in the media so much about um, child sexual exploitation. And what the doctor said about vulnerability is these criminal gangs, you think that they were all psychiatrists or psychologists. They can pick out vulnerability and really, really prey on it. And that's how they seem to uh, select their victims. And so many of these girls, and what's been in the media is how many of them come from um, children's homes or the care service, they are previously looked after children. And they are so exploited, and it's that vulnerability that's really picked out to the benefit and gratification of uh, criminal gangs. But the point that I make is that what this movie highlighted really is the double standards within the criminal fraternity. So they might have high morals when it comes to their own family. And it almost makes you think that, obviously, within Europe, within the West, we almost, um, I don't know, I don't know if studies have been done on this, but it's almost we have an acceptance and a higher tolerance level for what happens to people, perhaps, of a different nationality to that of our own. So um, I, can, I can think of a couple of uh, premises not too far from here where you can actually book a session with a variety of nationalities um, with the caveat that's always on the bottom line, what goes on between two individuals is obviously a private affair and that's how these organisations get out of the legal clauses that would make them brothels. So we work hard, but what we need is the community support and that's why this media and film media is really powerful because it does start to make people think, hang on a minute, that, that's going on in my city and it is going on in our city. Um, and it's going on in every city probably throughout the UK and we've got a responsibility as community members to do something about that and obviously within the police service to respond to information. So we really welcome this kind of media, it's something that we've used a lot within Sentinel in terms of addressing child sexual exploitation to make people think differently um, and certainly I think in terms of the vulnerability of some of the people, it's so hard then when they have been exploited to the end to then ask them to come forward and stand up themselves against these criminal gangs and often the easiest option or the best option is for them to return home. But we have got mechanisms to protect people but it will be instilled in their minds that they have no legal recourse but obviously we want to be there to help them and we work with other charities, Hope for Justice, to um, Hope for Justice is one of the biggest that we work with in terms of trafficking, to offer people an alternative once they have come forward and if they are frightened about going home then obviously we'll try and provide them with some support and there is financial recourse 
for them still in this country if they have been trafficked. But it's eyes and ears, it's always eyes and ears for us in terms of where's it going on, what's happening, um, and unfortunately it does cut across in terms of all the car washes, in terms of late night food venues, in terms of lap dancing arenas, etc, etc. But if I was to start on that subject, you'll probably never get me to sit down. Mm -hmm. So um, you don't want that, I can assure you. But we really, I really enjoyed that film, and it's something that I'll be referring to um, through Sentinel within our own organisation, and hopefully get loads of other statutory partners thinking differently.